Hello Internet, welcome to Royal Clarence Marina. What news do I have for you? Well, last night I had a brainwave about making the reflux brazier. Now, I don't know if, you, if you've listened to previous broadcasts, but I wanted, I need to make something because I, I have really bad reflux. And reflux is where the contents of your stomach um, come back up and cause heartburn or pain or discomfort, or in my case, nausea. And I want a bra that I can sleep in and walk about in, do my business during the day, what have you, that doesn't aggravate it. And it's really interesting because the minute I put a bra on, sometimes I forget. I forget that I've got a bra on and I wonder why I feel so nauseous. And then I remember I've just eaten a meal and I've got a bra on. Do you see? So I've realised, finally, that after I've eaten anything, I have to undo the bra. Of course, when you're out and about, you can't undo your bra. I'm a lady of certain um, pendulum. And really, it, it's not, uh, not a, a decent way to present oneself when one is out in the public. But equally, when one goes to bed, they're all over the place. And they need to be contained. So I've been working on a design that I can somehow manufacture or create. Or And you know, I've, I'm... Oh, can you hear that rain? We've got another storm, Romeo. Romeo's looking at the rain. He loves to look at the rain. Um, I'm also doing, actually, a poem, a, a live poem. So pop along to listen to that. It's called The Artist. And it's a live improvised poem that I'm going to upload probably four or five times a day. I want to um, share the way that an artist thinks because artists think differently to um, non-artists. I'm just going to plug myself in, actually. I've, I've managed to uh, forget to plug the battery in. Um and I think it's really exciting, I think it's really interesting. But I'm exploring nothing at the moment as an artist. I want this concept, this idea of nothing. I think you need to know what nothing is. You need to get some sort of concept of nothing before you can add something and appreciate something. But that's a by the by. Um, I'm, I'm doing that later and you'll find it. Um, so, anyway, back to the bra. Um, it's quite hard to make a bra that's eco-friendly. In fact, it's almost impossible because you need spandex, really. Um, you need something stretchy, lycra, spandex, something that, um, you know, has a memory um, to to clip to you, to hold something in. But you don't want anything that strangulates because that's what's causing the reflux. Anyway, I had this brainwave yesterday and I was chopping up T-shirts and I made something rather effective. Now, I'm going to have a meeting with my daughter later, who's a designer, a caged liberty. Or is it liberté? I think it's liberté. Caged liberté. It's pronounced, it's got an accent on the E. But caged liberty will do for now. And um, she makes uh, um, what I would describe as um, sexy, sexy harnesses. They're not really underwear as such. You can, you can wear them as overwear, actually. And I've, I've worn them over a dress. They're really fabulous. Um, but she sort of understands, I think, more what people would b pay money for, you know. Um, anyway, I slept in it. I, I did this arrangement with a T-shirt, which did, doesn't have any spandex in it, of course, but it does have a little bit of stretch um, because it's made from a T-shirt. So it's sort of jersey cotton stretch, very eco, actually. And obviously converting a, a T-shirt, um, recycling a T-shirt, very eco-friendly. Um, and it, it worked. I have no reflux. So I think I've created, essentially, the anti-reflux brassiere. Um, now I need to make it... Um, I mean, the one I made is quite attractive, actually. It suits me. I need to make it more um, user-friendly... Um, I need to sort out clasps, for example, where I get them from. I don't think I can make it 100% eco. I think that's out of the question, um, unfortunately. But, of course, when you make things by hand, bespoke, they are eco. When you're not manufacturing things in a factory, they're eco by default. 
So in that respect, they're definitely eco. And what I've done is I've designed some fabric, darling. It's a really lovely fabric. Um, uh, and I'm having it printed by the meter. And then you see I can make and sew and stitch. And uh, once I've made my prototype, I can employ people to make them for me. But just one at a time. Um, or, or, you know, maybe five at a time or whatever. Just it, it, rather than hundreds and hundreds that have to be thrown away, which is what fashion is all, has been all about for the last, you know, 100 years or so. Terrible. Um, or maybe not. Is that 100? Yeah, I suppose since factories were invented. Maybe. Is that when fashion started doing this terrible thing where they just produce hundreds and hundreds? Anyway, a terrible waste. So I'm, I'm pleased to say that I've had no reflux all night long and I feel utterly fabulous. I've, I'm taking a cocktail of drugs for other or things that ail one um, and feel rather fine, rather fine. So today I'm preparing, um, I'm going to show my daughter, it's my daughter's birthday actually, I'd like to wish her a very happy birthday. Um, she doesn't listen to this broadcast, none of my family listen to my broadcasts. They just think I'm boring and I probably am, but that's okay. We're allowed to be boring. The worst thing in life, the the worst thing about people is not that they're boring. The worst thing about people is that they're cruel or unkind. Um, and I'm not that, at least not today. <laughs> today I'm just boring. Um, it's funny though, isn't it? Because we have, I think when you're a certain type of person, as I am, you like to be cool all the time. And I suppose being a musician you're a bit, and an actress, you know, and a poet and all these things, one is definitely an attention seeker. And one, the, the horror for an attention seeker is to be dismissed and thought of as boring. But I think as you get older, you realise that actually boring is not an insult because you can't please all the people all the time. In fact, you can't please very many people at any one time. It's very hard to please any more than one person at a time. And this is the thing that I've discovered about the internet. We're all trying to please lots of people all at once. And do we need to? You know, when before the internet, when we just met up with friends, we went to a party, say, went to a shindig, went to a dinner. We'd only need to really impress one person there to get on with them. You know, we, we didn't need to hold court quite so much. And, and, you know, have everybody at the dinner party hanging on to your every word. Actually, as I'm saying that, I'm thinking, no, I used to like that, actually. <laughs> um, but, you know, with one to three people, I'd be pleased if I, ple if I impressed one to three people, I think. Or if, I, if one to three people thought I was entertaining. Let's put it that way. So this need to please, you know, hundreds of people and get hundreds of likes for your Instagram photo. I mean, I'm lucky to get two, actually. Or one, I mean, mostly, unless I put it down a load of hashtags, which I can never be bothered to do. I hate all that stuff. I can't bear it. My daughter's really good at it. She she does marketing for people. So she does. In, she's an Instagram marketer as well as a designer for her own business. And um, she, she does really well. She works for all these people and they get hundreds and hundreds of likes. She's really excellent at it. And she's told me how to do it, and I just think, God, that's really, really boring. I have no desire to do that. And my LinkedIn, I n never anything. It's like a, a sort of desert on my LinkedIn, as if I'm dead, as if I'm dry and lying in the midday sun on the sand, rotting. Um, sorry to be dramatic. <laughs> But I looked at my LinkedIn earlier and I thought, why why does, why does, do I just get ignored on my LinkedIn? And my Instagram, actually. Completely ignored. There's an, a no, none of the social media. I've just closed down my Facebook again um, because I don't like Facebook. For I think he's horrible, horrible, vile man, that, that Mark Z person. And while I'm on the subject, actually, um, of his meta, obviously I work with... You know, my whole sci-fi story, Immersion, is all about, um, the, you know, the future and uh, and fake realities. But it, it, this idea that he's going to create something that nobody else has got, that you step into, and, you know, the metaverse, it's actually just horrific because 
he just he just wants to make money and people are already being sexually assaulted in the metaverse and i was thinking about this and i was thinking how upsetting it would be if your avatar was um you know sexually abused and how the the authorities and people like mark zuckerberg will just say well it's not real but they don't understand how impacting that would be uh, as a somebody who's you know been through therapy and everything i i think that would be just awful for for our children i think it's cruel actually i think it's really really cruel um and the the, the problem is humans when they are left to their own devices without guidance and without um legal um policing they do the most horrendous disgusting things and this is where the problem lies and for this reason the metaverse isn't going to work and it's already failing in terms of um if you look at you know bitcoin and crypto and the amount of criminality that goes on there you know these things are failing and they're failing because humans are disgusting i'm afraid it's really time for us as individuals not as mass animals but as individuals to stand our ground and to say no we're not having it this is bloody awful it's got to stop it has to stop because you're going to destroy yourself of course i'm dealing with all this in my book immersion um which is free by the way um and you can go along to the telltale club and um read you know read each chapter i'll be doing another chapter while i'm away in hull um and i'm dealing with that but i'm not dealing with the metaverse I'm dealing with artificial intelligence, which is slightly different. Um, artificial experience and artificial intelligence are, are different, a different concept. Um, anyway, back to Hull. I'm going to Hull tomorrow. I woke up this morning, looked out the window, and it's still still doing it. It's raining. <laughs> oh, no, am I going to get wet tomorrow? I mean, I don't mind getting wet. It's fine. I've got hats and a fur coat. It's fine. Um, but I'm thinking already, today I need to pack, you see... So I'm going for two days. I'm going to take the granny trolley to try and protect my poor little neck from its arthritic condition. Um, and I was thinking about, I actually Googled yesterday, uh, posh granny posh um, shopping trolleys. Not granny trolleys. I don't think they'd know what a granny trolley was. Um, and it, this was on eBay. It was a bloody awful, darlings. Tar- big tartan things that, you know, I'm not, I am a granny, but... I'm not that sort of granny. I'm a radical granny. And, you know, well, one a radical granny wouldn't be seen dead with a, a tartan, one of those boxy tartan things with six wheels. I'm not an invalid yet. I've got a way, a way to go. I can still walk down the street. I don't know how, long, how much longer that will last for, but I can at the moment. Um, anyway, I have a granny trolley, which is black. It's just a plain black one. I thought, well, I could put something on it, couldn't I? I, what it needs is some sort of cool transfer, um, not a not an eighties band. <laughs> that would be really uncool. Um, an emblem or something. But I haven't got time. I'm not going to do it now. But I, I'm going to think about that for the future, because I it's an absolutely wonderful thing, you know, the shopping trolley. It's truly wonderful. Um, and then a bag for my PC and everything, uh, my Mac and everything. Um, so yeah. I think that's about it for today. Uh, will I do tomorrow's broadcast? I probably will, actually, because I'm... I'm. Well, I'll see how I go. But I'm doing this thing, the artist, and this idea of nothing. And when I say nothing, obviously there's no such thing as no activity. You have to be active to be alive. So you have to breathe. So I'm going to start with, you know, the artist breathes and then the artist wakes up. And the, so I'm going to probably over the next week or I might do longer just do these live improvised sort of poems really about um, you know what how I think and and how I know that I'm alive because although you think you're not doing anything if you like if you just lie on your bed for example and you think you're not doing anything well you're do, actually doing loads of things you're you're breathing you're, if your eyes are open, you're seeing things. But if you're, you can't shut your ears off. You see, because even if you, even if you put your fingers in your ears, you're going to hear your blood. 
So th this is what it's all about. It's this, what is nothing? Let's find the nothing state. Because the, the nothing state is really exciting. It's really interesting. There's actually a lot. And if you pay attention to it, you'll find that you're actually a really busy person. You know, your body's busy. Your electro, electro um, nerves, ele you know, all these um, zapping inside your your brain and your body. It's all going on. Can you hear it? So we're we'll looking at that. Can can we hear? Can we or can I? It's come. I mean, it's coming from the artist's point of view, but it's really channeling real life um, and concepts about living. So this the, this idea that we I'm looking for nothing, so that I can find something. Do you see? Because it's the contrast. The contrast between nothing and something is massive. So, um, you know, later on, you know, when I look at colour, for example, my next exhibition will be, a, a, I think it might be called Nothing. And I'm going to start with, you know, a blank room and, and then maybe some colours and, you know, and then these words that are nothing or the words that can't be quantified. I was thinking about, I was thinking about that, um, like uh, nearly... The, things like that, they don't make sense, really, unless they have words around them. So therefore, they're nothing words. They're sort of meaningless, but not meaningless. They're everything and nothing. Um, I, I was, I'm quite fascinated by these words that um, they're, they're descriptors, aren't they? But they, but without the thing, the nouns that they're describing or the verbs that they're describing, they are meaningless so they're senseless so there's almost a nothing so we have to add something to them do you see so um we perhaps happy nearly happy do you see um I f i'm very excited by this next project actually um so i'm going to be doing all that and i thought what perfect day sh to start it tomorrow actually because i'm going to hull so i'll be traveling so i can do these live broadcasts they'll all be done on my phone and I'll be travelling, so, you know, the, the artist on the ferry, the artist on the train, um, the artist meeting strangers, all of this sort of thing. It's really fascinating. Uh, the artist at a party. I'm going to a party. Um, so, yeah, I I hope you'll find those as interesting as I'm going to find them, making them. Of course, the artist makes art, and you, very often nobody's interested, but they will be interested in... 40, 50, 60, 70, 100 years. They'll be very interested. And I thought, well, seeing as I'm such a broadcaster, you know, such a radio presenter, and I've I've been doing radio broadcasts for such a long time now, um, that I really should be thinking about using it as an art form, which I haven't really done as such. I've used the platform to create my characters and to, um, you know, promote bands and stuff like that when I was presenting music gigs and things like that but I haven't really used the act of talking and the act of you receiving as an artwork so I thought oh, that's it's about time I did that really isn't it right well I think that's enough I've waffled on a lot today 18 minutes goodness me so I'll be back uh, tomorrow with this broadcast and of course with the artist broadcast so please Please, please, please pop along for those. And of course, you can see everything that I get up to, everything that I do over at Tale Teller Club. And if you if you are of a mind to um, do social media, but I think very low of it. I I think it's meaningless trash, actually. I think it's Biloxi. Um, I think it's for fools. But if you are of a mind where you enjoy that sort of thing, I I do have a very... Um, sluggish Instagram Telltale Club also and a very sluggish slow LinkedIn um, where I think I'm Sarnid Lamare FRSA I think that's me over there and I, what else do I have oh I don't know what else I have I mean I don't care what else I have it's really the website is my um, is, is the doorway to me if you're vaguely interested in all this art stuff that I do because that's who I am. All right. Au revoir, my friends. Au revoir.